I have an exhaust manifold here, and if you can tell, the pipes have pretty complex 3D sweeps that go in all different directions. How do we make these? How do we control these? And most importantly, if there are multiple ways to create these, which there are, which way is the best when? Well, let's talk about all of these things in this video. Now the first thing that we'll do when we make a 3D sketch is we'll trace out a path for our pipe to take. Notice the number of intersections is going to correspond with the number of bends when we're all done. Next, we'll create some construction lines and we'll make sure that those lines are parallel to our main axes and then we'll be able to dimension those so that we can get a very precise path that is uh, ex exactly to the dimensions that we want and one that we can edit later. And then finally, we'll go ahead and uh, once we have a dimensioned and constrained uh, 3D path, we'll add fillets or radiuses to show the bend in our sweep path. And we should have a complete sweep path where we can create a sketch now and finish it off with a sweep. Let's take a closer look as to what this 3D sketching process looks like. So I've created one runner. Let's create the second one, right? I'm going to create a line. One of the problems is uh, sometimes when we twist our view, it doesn't look like the way that we created that line. And that's because my grid is in this orientation. I can hit the tab key and turn my grid sideways. And then everything that I draw is at least parallel or somewhat more in the direction of this line. But this presents, of course, one of the difficulties of trying to make something 3D in a 2D screen. Uh, so you run into this no matter what platform you use that things aren't quite as predictable as a 3D sketch. But of course I can hit Control Shift P to show my planes and axes and I can start making some relationships that make things a lot easier. For instance, I have this axis coming out in this direction or Z direction. If I click on this in our line, then I can tell them to be parallel. Again, I just click on this parallel constraint up here, click on my line, click on my axis, and they become parallel. I'll uh, give this a dimension now. We'll give this a dimension of about 1.5. Now, it's not like a 2D sketch where things that are fully constrained turn black. Uh, these stay the same color, so let's jump into maybe creating another part of our path. Again, I can hit the Tab key if I know about the orientation that I want this to go. And of course, I want this to be inclined a little bit downward and uh, kind of go at an angle compared to all of my primary axes. But what, what do I do? I click on a reference line over here and I say, okay, I got my line here. We'll go parallel from here to here. And then maybe I want another line to go down. And again, I grab a parallel and I can say, ah, this axis is going straight down. So I know I can set this line to be parallel to straight down. Now, when I go to adjust my sketch, you can see it's not changing that line, and that's because my adjustments are, of course, in line with this plane. So I hit my Tab key, and now I can move this down because the orientation of my plane uh, agrees with that direction. Next, I'll create another line over here, and again, I'll hit the Tab key so that I can adjust it the way that I want to, and I'll make sure that this axis and this line are parallel. Well let's say that I want my line to, in the direction of this uh, line, <clears throat> this reference line, I want it to be a distance of 6. I want this to go down 3.5. And I want this to go over at a distance of 1. Right? And now, I can take the end of my line and make it coincident right there. So I've been able to control the way that my line goes in, in a very specific direction. And maybe I want this to be three now. Well, now I can adjust that to the, to the length that I want. And so it gives me something that I can update and adjust completely as needed. And I can do the same thing. And right, so this is how I start uh, carving out a path that I know I want things to take. Maybe I'll give this a distance of five. So grab a distance here, make it five. 
And of course, I don't know if that's going in the right direction, so we'll say parallel. It's one of our primary axes over here. <laughs> and it wasn't. I'll adjust my plane orientation again by hitting the tab key. And it did snap to the wrong side, so I'm going to delete my dimension real quick and re-add it in the right orientation. Again, we'll go 5. And I'll re-add my distance of 1 right here. I think I lost that, so we're going to say 1. And just like that, we are fully constrained again. And I'll make another part of my line right there. Right? So that's the first step. Now we're just about finished. I'm going to grab my line over here and connect it in over here. We'll make sure that we are parallel to our primary axis. I'll assign this a dimension of about 2.75. And then we should be fully constrained, right? So we have this fully constrained path. And what do we do? We're going to grab a fillet from there to there. 1.25 is a great size, I think, for me. And I'll keep on adding fillets. Again, these just smooth things out so we can actually have good curves in our exhaust runners, right? So we were able to make a very complex path, I think pretty easily and predictably, step by step, uh, to get exactly the dimensions that we want. And it's something that we can update the path if we need to in the future. I can make this 3.5, and you can see my routing updates accordingly. So step by step, we're able to make a fully constrained 3D path that works pretty well. So from here, we'll just grab this face, create a sketch on it that we can sweep. And then we'll choose sweep. And there is our runner. So we can continue to do this for the other two runners, but that is the process in depth of how we might make these complex 3D paths in a way that's dimensionally accurate and able to be updated. Let's take a look at this manifold now. You'll see it has a different feel to it. Perhaps it gives off a different vibe. This has uh, curves that are not constant, right? It starts out sharp and it gradually morphs into a more gradual curve. This one is a bit more organic, which we'll talk about uh, a bit later. But right now, how did we make this and how might the way that we made this compare to what we did with 3D sketches? Let's take a deeper look. So here is our manifold uh, that's been generated using surfaces instead of 3D sketches, and it has three runners, and we want to generate a fourth. Let's go through what that looks like. I'm going to hit Control shift p and K, and uh, let's generate a sketch here. So I'm going to jump on the XY plane and sketch out a path, uh, just a 2D sketch and a 2D path of what this runner will look like uh, if I look at it straight from the top. So I'm going to add a vertical line. I'm going to add a horizontal line here. And uh, I'm going to make this line horizontal with the origin right here. And then I'm going to give this a dimension of three so that, you know, we're running through the middle of the others and, and we're going to go through that little a uh, hole for our runner and then give another dimension here of six which lines up with the center of our uh, mounting plate there finally I'm okay with this going far past so we'll give it a dimension here <laughs> even 30 and we'll leave it next I want to give this a sketch fillet so I'm going to grab a fillet here and we'll create a fillet between these two lines. And we'll go with something like we'll go with something like 1.5, and we're fully constrained. Um, so next, I'm going to make a sketch here on my XZ plane. We're going to do the same thing and create a sketch. of what I want my runner to look like when I do it from the side here. 
So looking straight on from the side, this is the 2D path that it, it will appear that it will take. Again, I'll add a horizontal here. We'll give this a dimension of 127. And of course, we want this to be way up here. So one thing I can do is project, say, the path from another runner as a reference. And then I can make it coincident. So I choose a coincident constraint and make it coincident right there. Next, I know if I reset my view that I want this to be horizontal with my origin. And we'll make a dimension again of six. So that's what the center of the runner looks like if we're looking straight on. Finally, I'll add a fillet. And we'll make a very large bend. How about four? And we'll close that. All right, now that I have these two sketches, I can create uh, some surfaces off of those, which would require me to do some thin extrudes. Now, when I do a thin extrude, I can do that right now even, there's one thing that we should be cognizant or mindful of. We'll go mid-plane, and uh, 50 is fine. I'm doing a very large extrude here. That is, when I create a solid and I want to make a surface off of this, why we're intersecting with another solid so if I delete the face the whole thing turns into a surface and that doesn't work so there's a few ways to do this right the first one is to say you know what I'm gonna create a surface from face we're gonna not click that maintain associativity and then I'm just gonna delete my extrusion and my surface is left over uh, that's one way to do it another way or another thing that we can do is if I go and create my thin extrude Again, off of this sketch, we make it a mid-plane. I can just drag this up the tree to a point of before I made anything, at least anything significant. If I roll back, I can see that I have now <laughs> this before I made any other solid. And then it's easy for me to say, okay, yeah, let's just delete the faces that I'm not going to use for my surface. And we're in surfacing world. Next, I'll do the same thing. Right, I'm going to grab my sketch 20 and I'm going to drag that up. And now that this sketch is here, I'll go thin extrude, mid plane. We can see that where my sketch is, I can simply go back to my surface tab and I'll delete the faces that I don't care much about. And we have that. Okay. So now I want to trim these surfaces because where these surfaces intersect produces a 3D path, which just so happens to be exactly the path that we specified for our runner to go. So I'm going to choose trim over here and I click the two surfaces that I want to trim off of each other and I'll select one side and say OK. And what we've done is now we have the edge of this surface that has that exact path that we want our runner to go down. Now there's one thing I notice here, and that is uh, this edge will go a lot further than where we want it to stop there. And I think that can be easily addressed if I address this extrusion here. So uh, instead of suppressing it, I'm going to say edit. Instead of mid-plane, I'll say to depth. And now it starts where we want it to. So let's make sure that uh, everything else works out well. We'll roll this forward, and we are indeed trimming in the way that we want. So now we don't need this surface at all. We're going to go with delete face. And just like that, that is the exact path that we want. We'll go to a model and we want to, I'm sure we could use the edges of the surface. It is pretty good practice though, to also make a 3d sketch off of those um, edges so that everything is continuous. So we'll go with project.
And now I don't need this surface anymore, so we're going to go ahead and delete the face. Again, surface, delete face. And uh, now, if I roll everything forward, we're going to say generate to last feature. There is my 3D path of where I want my runner to go. So I've got a sketch that uh, looks like it would work. So we'll go ahead and choose sweep. And for my sketch to sweep, it'll of course be this one, sketch 12. And then for my path, I'll choose this 3D path over here. And we're able to generate our runner that way. So that is how we use surfacing to create these. And, I, and a few things I want to point out, of course, this is not a constant radius. And uh, it did require a lot of steps to make. But they were small steps, right? So if you want to avoid a 3D sketch, this allows you to make two 2D sketches into a basically a 3D sketch without having to worry about um, orienting everything correctly and, and all the things that come with a 3D sketch. So these are things to keep in mind. And let's talk about uh, which things I might put a ring on. So this is the 3D sketch sweep that we did initially with our exhaust manifold. And if I'm gonna put a ring on one for this exhaust manifold, it will definitely be this method. Most two benders will want things to be at the same radius every time and at a constant radius. And this delivers just that. So it'll be much more reasonable and easy to manufacture something that has that kind of design intent built in. Uh, this also has a very short tree. If I edit here and take a look at just our part, there's not that many features that produce a pretty complex part. And so there's a lot of merit to being able to use a 3D sketch that concisely and accurately positions the dimensions of these runners. But does that mean that 3D sketches are the best all the time? Absolutely not. Let's take a look at that other manifold. This is the manifold that we had for using surfaces. And you can tell most two benders probably will not like the uh, varying radius here, even though it gives off a really cool look, in my opinion. Uh, it probably isn't the most realistic thing that could be manufactured, at least under most circumstances. But there are cases where these organic curves do serve an advantage and even make the process faster. Let's take a look at an example of that. This is an example of a sweet path that is totally not planar, but I think a lot easier than trying to make a 3D sketch out of it. How did we make this? Well, we made a revolve, and then we made it into a surface, and then we did a helix and made that into a surface. And this should look very familiar because we've just done that with our 3D uh, exhaust header or manifold path. And so we cut that out we make a sweep along the edge of that surface and then complete our model around that sweep. So this is uh, something that was pretty straightforward again of, of tree with few features and if we were to try to do that with a 3D sketch things would get pretty complicated quite fast and I think being able to use surfacing actually saved us a lot of time making this. So there's an example of how we can pick out the right tool for the job and the right tool for our design intent. I think these non-planar surface generated sweeps work very well for things like 3D printing and other kinds of manufacturing where you don't have to conform to constant radii or other kinds of design intents and things can be a lot more organic. And 3D sketches work very well towards a lot of traditional manufacturing processes like tube bending. So think about the way that you want to design your part, and now you have multiple tools on your tool belt to be able to get it done. If this was helpful, please subscribe to the Libre channel, and we'll see you in the next one.